Hey everybody, I hope you're keeping well. And uh, celebrations are here, Pentecost Sunday. And the Holy Spirit God fell on the disciples in the upper room while they waited, praising, worshipping. And uh, we just want to give thanks to the Lord before we go into uh, the special service on Pentecost Sunday. Uh, Lord, we just give you thanks and praise and glory for everything that you did back then, over 2,000 years ago. Sending your Holy Spirit, as you said you would, amongst all the believers, not just Jews, but Gentiles. Because you said you would outpour your Spirit amongst all flesh. So, Father God, we give you thanks for that praise and we give you thanks for the start of the church that has been traveling and sharing the gospel for over 2,000 years. So, thank you, Lord. We give you praise and glory for this special, special day. Lord, as we uh, come to you today, we we, we pray in spirit and we pray spirit to spirit deep cries out to deep father god we just ask that you impregnate this message to us so that we'll be able to understand more about your works in the bible that allows us to walk with you and more importantly so that we can share your word and do what jesus said we should do and we give you praise and all the glory and Lord, one last thing, as it's uh, National Prayer Day today, we ask that everybody lifts their eyes to you in prayer and worship for this nation and for the communities and families and individuals. So Father God, we commit this time to you and we give you thanks for the opportunity to do so. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So, I hope you've had a wonderful day today. I um, hope you managed to listen to some messages that are celebrating the works of the Holy Spirit. Uh, through Jesus and um, sending his um, comforter as he promised he would to dwell amongst all of us and his Holy Spirit uh, outpouring on all flesh but I want to just have a look at the um, leading up to the Holy Spirit both from the Old Testament point of view and from the New Testament point of view where we're now looking at um, the book of Acts and uh, or continuing to look at the book of Acts and where we get the inspiration from the Holy Spirit, you know, bringing his um, uh, outpouring, is found in Joel. And we're going to look at uh, Joel chapter 2, verses 28 to 32, which talks about God's Spirit being poured out. So let's have a look at Joel uh, 28 to 32. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions, and also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my, my spirit in those days, and I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon into blood, before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. So. Uh, just a, a stunning little snippet of um, God's promise in the Old Testament that he would pour out his Holy Spirit and if we look at the, um, the time when Joel was prophesying this um, we look at uh, his, his biography if you want to call it that and they reckon it was probably between 835 and 805 BC so before he was born and uh, it was uh, in, in the book of Joel it was talking about the judgment but he was also talking about the grace of God and he came through that with very strong prophetic words and he was known as the one of the leaders in the minor prophets so when we look at um, Joel 28 to 32 there's a word that comes out there which is called dreams and it's a word wealth for you today and dreams is uh, basically one's imagination to, uh, to, to the vehicle of God's communication but there's also false dreams that can happen. But the imagination that leads to the vehicle of God's communication can be found in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and 3, verse 3, and Genesis chapter 20, verse 6. And where it talks about the false dreams, you can find that in Jeremiah 23, verses uh, 32. Joseph and Daniel are biblical champions of the dreams and revelations, both interpret interpretation of their own and others. So the word wealth that uh, we can take from that is the dreams. And why it's, why, why it's so important is because he's pouring out his spirit so that 
the old men shall dream dreams. There's also a kingdom dynamic that I'd like to share with you, which is the universal outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And what we find here is that the, prophet, the, the, prophet, the prophetic awakens God's people to the larger purpose that he has called us to. He also wants us to reach uh, the world around us through the work of the Holy Spirit. So when we are empowered from on high, we are able to witness and give testimony to the works of Jesus, that he came to walk on this earth and send the Holy Spirit to comfort us and to guide us into all truth. The fullness of the Holy Spirit also results in salvation of those calling upon the name of the Lord. So those are very uh, word wealth that uh, is dreams and the kingdom dynamics which is the universal outpouring of the Holy Spirit which is found in the Old Testament and still exists today. And as we've been celebrating, coming together, one accord in spirit and in truth, He can pour out His Spirit. And when you have that personal um, revival in, inside of you, that then transforms into communities and nations. So we, we press in as much as we can. But in the book of Joel, it talks about the locust, and the locust actually represented God's judgment on the nations. And if you can go and have a look at some uh, clips about some locusts that are plaguing the world at the moment, you'll be able to identify that God's judgment is on the earth. And let alone the locusts, there's also stuff going on that's causing lots of uns unsettling and, and riots, which. Um, yeah, you know, he did say things would get like this um, in the last days. But his pouring out of his Holy Spirit is an abundance of spiritual rain. So as we quite often like to uh, have the, the, the physical rain that, that nurtures and grows our plants and, um, and, and things that, that, that are dear to us for his creation, he also wants to pour out his Spirit, uh, the, the rain of the Spirit. So let it rain is something that comes to mind. But he talks about all flesh, and that's every category of person. It doesn't matter about your gender, your age, your class, uh, male, female. He wants to pour out his spirit amongst all flesh, including daughters. And the ministry is open to the daughters, which allows them to dream dreams and have visions too. The maid servants and the, uh, the, the maid servants and the um, both men and women alike who feel that they are leading in a place of um, a slavery at the moment. The, it's open to them too so there's nothing stopping anybody from being able to receive the Holy Spirit as long as we accept him as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the new covenant authority of the Spirit is for all, for all flesh and those who come into the faith of the new, of the new covenant so it's a beautiful little opening um, section of the Old Testament uh, the prophet Joel who said that he would uh, that, that he said that God would pour out his spirit amongst all flesh beautiful 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 but let's go through to the acts which is pretty much where we left off last week uh, talking about how uh, they went into the upper room and uh, they they waited but it wasn't just the men it was also the women so it's another confirmation both men and women open to all so the holy spirit came when they were on one accord we covered this last week we also covered how the crowd responded because remember it was the Jews that uh, the, the, the also had the Holy Spirit fall upon them but it was also the Jews that were Christians that allowed them to see what the what the Lord was doing also to the Gentiles so if we have a look at um, Acts chapter 2 verses 16 to 21 and I'm going to take it straight from the New Living uh, the New King James Version but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my maidservants and on my maidservants, I will men servants and maidservants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapour of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So again, that's the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy that Peter stood up. And basically, Peter was the one that actually took the lead of um, the believers in, in, in Acts. Because it was Peter that stood up with the eleven and raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. 
for these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day, being nine o'clock in the morning. So it's a wonderful uh, uh, proclamation of the gospel that allowed the, 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 the gospel to be shared amongst all the nations. So let's have a look at what it says. In verse 14, verse 14 we're going to just crack it open here a little bit. Um, it, uh, he basically said in verse 14, he said, he would be the spokesman, well, Peter was the spokesman for the disciples, and he took the lead role, as I mentioned. And verse 17, where it says, And it shall come to pass in the last days that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. I just want to pause there for a second, because there's a couple of pointers that I'd like to bring, uh, share with you. The last days that he was talking about was the era of the church from Pentecost to the return of Christ, which we await for. He also said, I'll pour out my spirit in all flesh. And that was Peter's explanation of the, the unusual events of Pentecost, when the fire came on uh, as, as if it was uh, fire on top of their heads. And every believer is anointed to be a priest and a king of God, of our Lord King Jesus. An evidence of the participation in the Spirit's outpouring of dreams and prophecies. And those would be the, the signs and the wonders that the Lord would show, the healing and the casting out of demons, etc., etc. Jesus is the Lord who will return. And he will return in judgment and upon whom must now call in repentance and faith. So if I can share a little bit with you, just to break this up a little bit. Sometimes when we're walking a, a walk, uh, whether we know it or not, it's a walk with the Lord. Um, and when we acknowledge it, we start to come to the realization that we're not walking alone. we actually got someone walking with us. And that is actually the Holy Spirit. And I just want to share a testimony of myself and someone else so that I can give you an example of my own personal testimony, as well as somebody else just recently who's just gone through a radical transformation and not by anybody's power, but of that of the power of the Holy Spirit. Many years ago, well, not many years ago, probably about five, six years ago, um, I was walking a journey with the Lord and um, uh, I committed myself to Him, got baptized and uh, was walking a journey, very difficult. Because remember, um, when you say yes to the Lord, doesn't mean you're going to have it uh, all, all smooth, uh, plain sailing, sa sailing. But He does promise you that He'll be with you no matter what. And a personal testimony that I can share with you is that it was a very difficult time in my life, and uh, I was, I almost came to the point of doubting, doubting whether he, whether the, the, our Lord Jesus Christ was real or not. And I actually uh, overcame that through the Word and through the testimony of what the Word says. And stood in the truth so that I could stand under all circumstances to the point that I actually went to a, a, a gathering, a worship gathering. And it was during that service that I was really, um, uh, the, the Holy Spirit really came on me. It had in the past, but it was subtle. This one was powerful. And it was almost like a light switch from dark to light. Incredible, amazing. I, I, I don't know how to put it into words, but all I can say is that I know it was the work of the Holy Spirit. So during that time, I still continued to, to walk with the Lord in His Word, took some steps of faith, some worked out, some didn't, but I continued to believe that the Lord was with me, and He was with me, because he, when there were times when I was praying on my own, or in a corporate gathering, I was praying for things that, that, that uh, only, only He could answer, which He did in some circumstances. Some others, I still wait, but I stand on the truth that He is King and Lord of Lords, so that he will be able to guide me into all truth and be able to share the gospel with others which i'm doing right now so let's have a look at the references um, that allows us to uh, go deeper into these verses which is um, uh, mainly focusing on verse 17 to 21 and i want to look at uh, verse 17 and uh, i read it just now which is where he talks about the um, uh, outpouring of the holy spirit on all but uh, let's have a look at where else it uh, gives us some reference to that. And if we turn to Acts chapter 10, verses 44 to 48, it talks about the Holy Spirit falling on the Gentiles. Now remember, I said that the Jews had the, the Holy Spirit falling on them, the disciples, but also the Gentiles, because not all of them were Jews, okay? But they still received, both Jews and Gentiles received the power from our Most High. So I'm going to read from uh, uh, chapter 10 of Acts, verses 44 to 48. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon these who heard the word. 
and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out in, on the Gentiles, Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter answered, Can anyone forbid water, that these should not be baptized, who you have received the Holy Spirit, just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, and they asked him to, say, to stay a few days. So, as I mentioned, just, just as the, the Jewish believers they received the Holy Spirit, the Gentiles did too. And uh, the, the Jewish uh, believers, the Christians, actually saw this happening. So it was a first-hand account. They could see this for themselves, which made them believe. And there's a kingdom dynamic that I'd like to talk to you about, which talks about the miracles with Gentiles too. It's a beautiful little kingdom dynamic for you. So um, it talks about the Holy Spirit's fullness. The fact that the Gentile household of Cornelius was included in the outpouring of the Spirit is a fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel 22:28, which we just read. The presence of the sign in tongues was particularly significant to the Jews who were accompanying Peter in that they received the Holy Spirit just as we have. This was later related to the leadership in Jerusalem as evidence that the Gentiles had truly been accepted by God in the plan of salvation. The baptism with the Holy Spirit is for all believers. That these began speaking in tongues as Peter was preaching reveals that the pattern of receiving the Holy Spirit's baptism is not dependent upon first being baptized in water. However, it does not make water bapt baptism optional for the believer. So what he's saying is, he's saying that sometimes, and I mentioned this just in our last uh, few sessions, that um, sometimes the Holy Spirit doesn't work in a chronological order. Sometimes it can fall upon you before you get baptized, but it doesn't negate the fact that you still need to be baptized in water. In, in, in his description here, which is a testimony that I'm going to share with you now, of someone else who's had a radical transformation, it stands to test that even though the Holy Spirit has revealed himself in the most powerful way, as I'm going to share with you now, this, it still requires you to go through the water baptism, going underneath the water and coming up. Remember John baptized Jesus, and then Jesus said, well, the Lord said, this is my son with whom I'm well pleased when the dove landed on his shoulder. So what I'm going to share with you now is another little testimony of someone else. Recently, there's been a, a young chap who's, um, yeah, he's, he's, he's uh, had a radical transformation, put into some situations that he, know, he knew he couldn't handle himself, and he cried out to the Lord. In fact, he also felt that he might have just lost all hope. Um, and and uh, the Lord... Into the, the Lord in, came in a most powerful way that will, I believe will be able to uh, be a, a grounding for his testimony as to how the Holy Spirit works, especially during this time. And he came to the Lord, he came to realize the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit and the whole body of Christ through what he went through. I won't go into details because it's not my testimony to share, but what I will share is that he hasn't been baptized yet. So he still wants to get baptized, even more so now because he's seen the working of the Holy Spirit. So that is where it comes to, where he says, The Holy Spirit baptism is not dependent upon first being baptized in water, however, it does not make water baptism optional for the believer. So I just want to encourage you with that. I want to really put that out there for, for you to, to really receive. Because if you've had the Holy Spirit come on to you, um, but you've not been baptized, You've, you've seen the power of the Holy Spirit, you've seen the Holy Spirit working in and through you, you've seen the Comforter come in along beside you, and if you've not been baptized, please, it's such a beautiful thing to be able to go through that process, which means that you've done, you've received both the Holy Spirit and the water baptism. If you haven't received the Holy Baptism, that's okay. Get baptized in water, and then He will come and bring the Holy Spirit upon you the more you journey with Him. But remember, when Jesus was baptized, he just didn't walk into that water and let John baptize him uh, from, from, from nothing. He spent years and years getting into the Word, getting into the Word and sitting in the disciples. Remember Joseph and Mary lost him and they couldn't find him and they were panicking. And when they found him, they said, where have you been? He says, I've been in my father's house. In other words, he had been studying the Word. He had been teaching the rabbis about the scriptures. So uh, although the, 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 the baptism of the Holy Spirit and water is important, it's even more so important to get into the Word. And you don't have to wait to be baptized before you start reading the Word. You can start reading the Word before you get baptized. So I want to leave that as a bit of an encouragement for you. As we move on, um, we're going to move on to Acts 21 because that also has a bit of a, uh, a cross-reference to 
uh, verse 17 that we've just read. And I'm taking it from Acts uh, chapter 21 verses 9. And it talks about the warnings on the journey to Jerusalem that Paul had to go through because he went through quite a journey of sharing the news, uh, going to the churches, uh, speaking to the churches about uh, how, he, how he felt that they were operating. And uh, th this particular verse talks about F Philip and his daughters. And it says, Now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied. So what I want to initially say is that the, 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 virgin, the four virgin daughters that he's talking about they were kept in a place of pureness and holiness so they they received the, the power from on high to be able to prophesy and dream uh, and 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 um, share the word the gospel but i'm not saying that that disqualifies anybody else not at all all i'm saying is referring to scripture of uh, acts chapter 20 21 verses 9 saying that philip had four virgin daughters who prophesied okay and um when we look at that uh, that, that little verse we understand that uh, the Lord will be able to use each and every one of us as he did with um, Philip's daughters um, and, and I'd leave it for you to go and read more around the context of that verse which um, I, as I said I've read chapter 21 verses 9 but I want to encourage you this is part of what we've been talking about the salvation of the, uh, the conviction of sin and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit through the sanctification and walk with the Lord to become more holy so that applies to men and women Again, as it is with the, the Holy Spirit falling on all people, it's available for all people and it's free. Okay, so we can also have a look at a bit of a kingdom dynamic, which talks about the, wo the women um, in, in the New Testament, uh, which is uh, Philip's daughters in this case. This reference to Philip's daughters, each exercise in the gifts of prophecy, makes clear that the women did bring God's word by the power of the Holy Spirit and that such ministry was fulfilled, accepted in the early church. This reinforced by Paul in 1 Corinthians 11.5 where he directs that a woman may prophesy but that she must be properly covered, that is rightly related to her husband or other spiritual authority, uh, a regulation incumbent upon all spiritual leaders, male or female. It's puzzling why the place of women in ministry is contested by some in the church. Women had an equal place in the upper room waiting the Holy Spirit's coming and the birth of the church. Then Peter's prophetic sermon at the Pentecost affirmed the Old Testament was now to be realized. Your daughters and maidservants would now share fully and equal with men in realizing the anointing, fullness and ministry of the Holy Spirit, making them effective in witnessing and service for the spread of the gospel. Through the place of men, it seems more pro pronounced in the number of who fill leading leadership uh, offices. There does not appear to be any direct restriction on privilege. The direct mention of uh, Phoebe as a a deacon, uh, John's letter as an elect lady with instruction concerning, concerning, concerning who she allows to minister in her house. Uh, and then John also uh, talks about Chloe and uh, Udia, which seem to be women in those homes believe, where believers gathered. The acceptance of women in public place of ministry in the church is, is not a concession to the spirit of the feminist movement, but a, a refusal, refusal of such place might be a concession to an order of the male chauvinism unwarranted by and supported in the scriptures. Clearly, women did speak, preach and prophesy in the early church. So I've taken that from the, um, uh, the New King James Version, Spiritful Bible. Let me go on to having a look at Matthew 26, 41. This is now going on to the same verses 17 that we're still busy with. See how many references there are just to one verse in the Acts. It's amazing. But if we have a look at Matthew 26, 41. Um, it spoke about uh, 26, 41. Yeah, it spoke about where Jesus went into uh, the garden. And uh, he went and prayed uh, in the garden. Uh, and I'll read from 36. He ca uh, Jesus came with him to a place called Gethsemane. And to the disciples, he said, sit here while I go and pray over there. They took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, it is possible, if it is possible, let this cup from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And then we're going to lead up to the verse 41. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one more hour? 
Verse 41, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And that's talking about having the spirit and the flesh. And if you recall one of our previous discussions, we were talking about um, operating in the spirit and in the flesh and in the carnality of, of, of the human spirit. And it's just an encouragement to you to um, be able to discern, which we're going to get into in a second, through the gifts of the Holy Spirit, in which, which um, authority you're busy uh, walking in and prophesying in and sharing the gospel. Obviously, if you're sharing the gospel, you're operating from a spiritual point of view. But even in your daily walk, and if you believe that there's a word for somebody, you've got to test it with um, the, the Holy Spirit to see if it is from the Holy Spirit. The word wealth uh, here is flesh. And flesh talks about um, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a substance of the body, whether of animals or persons, and um, it's an ethical and spiritual sense. Um, and it's the lower nature of a person, the seat and vehicle of sinful desire. So we've got the flesh and then we've got the spirit. And obviously as we're getting more holier, we're walking away from the flesh and the sins and the natural desires of man and woman, and we're walking into a place of holiness where we will be able to uh, walk in spirit and in truth. So then we go to 1 Corinthians. So now we're jumping around nicely because it's got so many references. But this one is now going to uh, the verse 18 of, of, of Acts. And if I just read verse 18 of Acts so that we can uh, just know what we're referring back to. It says, On my maid servants, uh, on my men servants, and on my maid uh, servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. So 1 Corinthians 12.10, uh, if we go there quickly. Okay. So 1 Corinthians 12.10 talks about the spiritual gifts, the unity and diversity. This is such a powerful verse that is something to be carried with you all along your journey. Because while we are gifted in certain areas, we certainly may not be gifted in all. Or we may not be mature in all. But when we're operating in the body of Christ and people have different giftings and, and, um, and, and skills that will be able to build up the body of Christ, know that that's when you're not walking alone and that's the building up of the body of Christ in unity. So I just want to go through a couple of things. I'm going to first read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 10. And uh, we have a look at where it says, And to another, the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, and, and to another uh, different kinds of tongues and to another interpretation of tongues so the important thing here to realize is that while we're walking in the spiritual gifts and the unity and diversity the different gifts that we have we need to understand that there's nine different gifts that we are bestowed with from on high from the holy spirit and i'm going to give you four of them and i'd encourage you to take time to go and look for the other five to make up the full complement of nine and it's a very good read that and if you'd be able to uh, write it down and just uh, spend time in prayer and meditation asking the Lord which gifts he's, you feel that, um, that, that he's given you from on high and where you can improve on the other gifts so that you could be mature in those areas but I'm going to give you uh, four and um, the four that I'm going to give you are, are words of wisdom and words of knowledge and then there's gifts of faith and gifts of healing and I'm going to go and leave the rest, or the, the next file for you to go and find out, just so that you can go find the nuggets for yourself. But it's a beautiful, um, uh, it's a beautiful way that we can identify and learn about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and how the body of Christ move and be able to complement one another through the different uh, uh, the gifts that we have. And remember, we have unity and diversity in one body. Right, then we're going to be looking at um, Acts chapter 15, verses 12, which relates to um, verse 19 of what we originally read about Peter's sermon. So if we go back to Peter's sermon and just read uh, verse 19, he says, I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. So if we go to then, the, the, the cross-reference on this one is um, Acts chapter 15, verses 12. And it's talking about the Jer Jerusalem Council. And, um, and, and, it, and, and I'm going to take it from verse 12. He says, Then all the multitude kept silent and listened to Barnabas and Paul, declaring how many miracles and wonders of God had worked through them amongst the Gentiles. 
So now this is referring to the work that the Holy Spirit has done through them and what they have experienced and witnessed and shared on their journey. And uh, this was uh, aimed at the Jerusalem Council. But the wonders, the word wonders is the word, another word well. So we're getting lots of nuggets here. But it talks about um, the, the uh, let's have a look here. It says, um, the science that deals with uh, unexplainable phenomena uh, denotes extraordinary occurrences, supernatural uh, prodigies, and uh, unusual manifestations, miraculous incidents pertaining to the future rather than the past, and uh, the acts that are so unusual that they cause the observer to marvel or to be at awe. And it's always a plural associated with uh, simeon, which is signs. Signs and wonders are a perfect balance for touching man's intellect, emotions, and will. So let me give you an example there. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was praying about something. And I was asking the Lord to reveal it to me if it was His will. And um, I, I kept it in my heart. Uh, I just I kept it in my heart because sometimes in a season, you'll find that the Holy Spirit will work in and through you, either to release the Word straight away, or to hold on to it for a season when it's right to give, or for confirmation that it is indeed from the Holy Spirit. So this example that I'm giving you is that it was a dream, it, it, it was a it was a prayer that I prayed, and it was earnestly praying for this. And some too. There's one that was ongoing for a long time, and there was one that was literally just a couple of days prior to the the release of it. And there's no ways in this world that I would have had any influence over it, and no one else had influence over it because I didn't share it with anybody. But the point that I'm trying to make is that when when you see these wonders come to pass. Wonders of either a word that's been confirmed to you through the scriptures. So in other words, you pray about something or something comes in your heart, which does happen. Sometimes you get something from the Holy Spirit. You're not quite sure what it's all about. So you hold on to it and ask the Lord to reveal it to you. And when he reveals it to you in his word, it's like, wow, all of a sudden, wonders. Thank you, Lord. Or if it's a wonder that's manifested through an answered prayer, it just completely throws, it just throws you into adoration that you just can't help but praise the Lord. For his good works that he is doing because he will get the glory all the time and in this particular example he did get the glory because no one else had mentioned it or i hadn't mentioned it to anybody but I saw, I saw the manifestation of it and it's not the first time so what i'm trying to share with you is that when you're in a place of um seeking the lord in terms of uh, dreams and visions and 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 um, prayers i want to encourage you to walk continue walking on your journey to get more holy in other words ridding yourself from the things that are going to stop you stop the holy spirit from coming to dwell within you and that could be anything it could be anything it could be so many things I, 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 i'd be here for hours trying to explain all the things but what i'm trying to say is that anything that's going to stop you from being able to hear the holy spirit's voice or hear the holy or feel the holy spirit's presence i want to encourage you to put those things aside because that is interrupting your communication and intimacy with the lord and I want to encourage you, when you do get let go of those things that will stop you from uh, receiving the word from the Lord or hearing or feeling His presence, you will be able to walk in more truth and stand on the rock that He has been able to provide for you to stand. But you can't do that without A, turning back to Him and walking a journey with Him and B, preventing anything from coming into your life that may be able to prevent you from hearing, feeling and, and knowing the intimacy of the love of the Father and the Holy Spirit. As I've explained before, sometimes you've got the Holy Spirit little a dove that sat on Jesus' shoulder. And if you've got that dove sitting on you, but something happens that is uh, contrary to the Holy Spirit's, uh, the, the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, um, then it will fly away. It will lift. But it will also come rest back on your shoulder once you get back into that place of, of peace. Um, and I want to encourage you with that. That's a very, I feel it's a very powerful word that, that I want to share with you for now is, is, is dwelling. And abiding and look we're going to be going into the next stage of lockdown now which allows you to get back into those temptations going to buy the liquor uh, and, and a few other things that may distract us from being close with him but i want to encourage you you've got the choice just like you've got the choice to turn back and give your life to the lord you've also got the choice to be careful of what comes into your life that will prevent you because if you've been experiencing the holy spirit in your life i wouldn't want that to go away from you and i'm sure you wouldn't too so I want to encourage you, just check what's going to be coming into your life over the next season that may or may not be contributing to the Holy Spirit staying with you. So, uh, we're going to look at verse 19, which, oh, sorry, verse, twen uh, verse 20. 
which uh, I'll read to you what it said. It says, The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. So this is talking about the Son of Man. And if we go to Matthew, Matthew 4.29, it says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give us light, and the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And right now we're going through a time. This is, these are the words by Jesus himself. Um, and it, I'll read uh, verse 30. It says, the son, of the, the son of man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven and with power and great glory. So this is now the second, this is the coming of, of Christ. And it's talking about uh, the, the great tribulation that's going to be coming and the signs leading up to it. So um, his return will be both prophetic and symbolic, i.e. things that are happening, the, the uh, desolations and uh, pestilences and everything that's happening. These are signs that he's coming again. And this is why it's so important for you to be able to give your life to the Lord through baptism of water and the Holy Spirit and walking with the journey. Because I certainly want you to be coming, going up with the Lord, so that He will be able to come for His spotless bride. Anyway, the next one that I want to finish off with is um, Romans 10 verses uh, 13. And this refers to verse 21 of Peter's sermon. And it says in verse 21, And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if we go to Romans, and have a look at Romans 10 verses 31. It talks about the calling of the name of the Lord. Sorry, not 31, 13. <laughs> got, my, got my dyslexic cap on. Um, it says, For the scripture says, Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So the gospel is universal in its application, but um, it's a demand and resp a universal response for its application and um, proclamation of the, of the gospel of Jesus Christ so that others will be able to come into a loving relationship with him and the Holy Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Then we're going to be looking at Luke 7. Point five, chapter 7 verses 5 and this is the last verse that we're going to be looking at it says for he loves our nation and has built us a synagogue and what that talks about is that uh, the faith is secured and pardoned and forgiven sorry I've, written, I've, I've read the wrong one sorry not 5 Chapter 50. I thought there was something wrong there. <laughs> so let's have a look. Okay. Correct verse. Verse 50. And he said to them, He said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. So if we go back just a little bit, we're talking about the sinful woman who came to the well and said that there was a problem that uh, she was encountering. And he actually pointed out the problem that she had. Um, and he, he basically forgave her and said, go in peace, you have been saved. And the word saved is the word wealth that we're looking at. And that's uh, basically to keep safe and sound, to render from danger. And um, it talks about the, 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 the ministry of, of, of healing uh, and saving of the physical death, but also the healing from the spiritual death by the forgiveness of sin. And that comes through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But remember, he gives us new life and he causes us to have a new heart. And that's the most important that the thing that we can take away from this is that in closing we're looking at um, the, the, the Pentecost Sunday which has been magnificent it's been a journey from the Passover seven weeks plus a day which is 50 days and here we are Pentecost Sunday and walking into a new season both here on earth and in the heavens and my prayer for you is that uh, you, you take the time to observe and take um, count of, of your spiritual walk with the Lord and ask the Lord how you can respond not react but respond to him whether it be through sin or walking deeper into a relationship with him because remember one step closer to him is his ten steps closer to you 
as I've shared with my personal testimony and with that of someone else. And I'm sure you'll be able to have many more yourself, which will then be able to be your testimony to the witness of the gospel. So, in closing, I just want to thank you for this time together. I want to ask, before we close in prayer, is that if you haven't been baptized, I'd encourage you to take that step wherever you are. Go and find a church that you can talk to about uh, being baptized, one that you feel comfortable with, one that you want to join the family of believers who will then walk beside you and be able to equip and help you so that you will be able to come to the full maturity. We so ask you for a fullness of life through you, through the Holy Baptism and also the Holy Spirit abiding with us because Lord you said that you would send another one like yourself in addition so we have you Lord we thank you for that we have you in and th with us and through us because you are omnipre omnipresent omni omnipotent you are the King of Kings Lord of Lords so thank you Lord and further Lord we ask that we bring that you bring the healing and deliverance for each and every one of us so that we may be able to walk in the fullness of your love we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus and we give you all the praise and glory for this beautiful day. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the message. I know there's been a lot of verses. So you might want to listen to the message again. And uh, if you do want to be baptized and you don't know where to get baptized. Just uh, put a message uh, below. And uh, I'll certainly be able to guide you with that. And, uh, and help you in that process. With, with the help of the Holy Spirit. So thank you all. And we'll speak to you during the week for... The continuation of the works of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. Love you all, stay safe, and have a beautiful, beautiful afternoon. Love you.